tonight on CTV News, the famous CBN Pops shark needs a new home, and it will help CSU in the process. Our sports anchors have the lacrosse game results, and we spice things up for the entertainment. All this plus weather coming up now. Good evening, I'm Kay Bennett. Thanks for tuning in to CTV News. Let's get to the latest CSU and Fort Collins news. A renowned fraternity, Sigma Chi, is under investigation by CSU Conflict Resolution and Student Conduct Services for alleged violations of the student code conduct. The investigation should be completed in three weeks with possible dis disciplinary action for the organization and students involved. No other details are being given at this time because the investigation is ongoing. The university stated that they will investigate fairly and act accordingly to whoever is found accountable. Two suspects were taken into custody Tuesday after a two-hour standoff with the SWAT team. According to Fort Collins Police, it happened at 4.30 after an argument between a homeowner and their guests on 600 Ponderosa Drive. According to Sergeant Dean Cunningham, the homeowner told police that the guests had pointed a gun at him. Officers arrived on scene and called in the SWAT team after the guests and another man inside refused to come out. After the SWAT team used flash sound diversionary devices to get them out. The two men were taken into custody. Charges have not been filed. Construction on a parking garage for the summit on college has officially begun after nearly two years of waiting. Limited parking at the summit, located on the intersection of College Avenue and Stewart Street, sends students parking in nearby neighborhoods, angering local residents. Local businesses and property owners tried to stop the parking garage, appealing it twice with no success. Now that the construction has begun, city planning officials say that Summit developers plan to sell their space to Chicago-based Core Spaces, a company that develops student housing. CB and Potts said goodbye to the original Campus West location and hello to the Foothills Mall. This move leaves the famous 250-pound Potts shark in search for a new home. Over the next two weeks, the shark is up for auction to the highest bidder, and all the proceeds will go to the CSU's Fermentation Science and Technology Program. After 42 years of memories, the CB and Potts' first location on West Elizabeth is sadly quiet today. To those locals who have really good memories at this first location that opened up in 1942, you might not want to see this. Empty chairs, dry pitchers, wires, and empty boxes are left. But still standing proud above the dark bar is the iconic Potts Shark. 22 years ago, this building was remodeled and at that time the shark was brought in. If this shark could talk, it would have some great stories. We've had people talk about like, I met my wife here, I've celebrated the birth of my children here, I've celebrated my 21st birthday, I had my first legal drink at CB and Potts. Now the Fort Collins icon is looking for a new home to the highest bidder, with the proceeds going to the Colorado State's Fermentation and Science Program. It's a great way for us to um, support the fermentation science program and really create some really good awareness for what good things that department's doing. Across town at the new location, two servers can't see themselves buying the shark. He's kind of scary a little bit, so I don't think I'd want him chilling in my house. I wouldn't personally want the shark in my house. But still have love for it. Everyone was like, this is the shark, this is it, like this is Potts, this is the image of Potts. We like to call him Bruce sometimes. Uh, he, everyone used to ask about him, that was the most asked question for sure. While the CB and Potts legacy lives on at the Foothills Mall, the beloved shark in its first location won't be forgotten. It's hard to say what'll happen here at 1415 West Elizabeth. Whatever happens, the, the memories will always still be at this address. If you know of a loving home for the 250 pound 15 foot shark, Possibly in your friend's man cave, that is grounds for some serious bragging rights. Visit csu2016.gesture.com. Are you an animal lover of all kinds? Well, your day has come. The James L. Voss Veterinary Teaching Hospital on Drake in Fort Collins is hosting an open house where you can learn to care for pets, exotic animals, and livestock. The event is free on Saturday, April 16th, and it opens at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Cam the Ram is a confirmed guest, so get in line. Weather anchor Liz Prossy is here now. Liz, are you thinking about going to the open house? You know what can the ram is going to be there? You can count me in. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I'm just going to be there just in case there's puppies. I'm going to need us some puppy love right before graduation. What do you think? 
I think so too. I mean, everyone loves puppies. What is your favorite kind of puppy? Husky. Definitely. Husky. What about you? You know, I'm going to go with the Labrador. I have a yellow lab and he mm. owns my heart. Definitely. Well, <laughs> tell me a little bit about this weather coming up for the weekend. I'm loving the sunshine. Is it going to yeah. stay? <laughs> Bad news. It wouldn't be Colorado if we don't go 15 degrees above average to 15 degrees below average. Dang it. We're going to be seeing rain and possibly some snow, but I will let you all know what to expect oh, coming up good. after the break. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out Collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. Welcome back, Rams. I'm weather anchor Elizabeth Prossy with your latest weather update. Here at Colorado State University, we've got a gorgeous sunset on this Wednesday evening, and it feels great outside, too. We're looking at currently in the 60s right now. Calm and clear. Do have that slight breeze coming out of the southwest. But if you're out and about this evening, maybe taking advantage of Sonic's half-price shakes right now, head on over. It's beautiful outside. We've got Right now, temperatures in the 60s, they're going to be cooling down into the 50s, so comfortable walking weather for you. Looking out across the state, though, we can see for tonight, we're going to see those lows in the 30s and in the 40s. We're going to stay above freezing mostly across the state for tonight. As you can see across the I-25 quarter, we're going to see those temperatures in the 30s and 40s. And of course, it's going to be a great evening. Maybe again, go head out to Sonic. As we can see, Pueblo, we're looking at 47. Eastern Plains, 45 degrees in the Mar. Got those mid to upper 40s. So it feels great outside for your Wednesday. Looking ahead to Thursday, though, we're going to see the sun and the nice temperatures continue. This is the calm before the storm. We're going to see those temperatures warm up into the mid 70s. You can see a high of 75 degrees tomorrow. Going to have that mixture of sun and clouds, so make sure you go outside and enjoy because we've got rain the next couple of days. But let me not get ahead of myself because tomorrow it's going to be nice and toasty. 79 degrees in Pueblo, Lamar 84. We've even got 81 degrees in Sterling and then 70s along the I-25 corridor. Now looking ahead to our Friday, that is where we're going to see the storm system that's right here and it's going to be moving down south. Friday into Saturday, that's where we're going to see it move through the four corners and it's going to start impacting us around lunchtime Friday. Now with this storm system, as you can see with our seven day forecast, the main story is going to be rain. Lots and lots of rain starting from Friday, Saturday, Sunday and even into Monday. As you can see, those temperatures are going to start dropping as well. Now the question will be, are we going to see snow? Right now, it's looking to be mostly rain. Could see that snow mix in just depending on how cold the atmosphere gets. As you notice, those lows are going to stay just above the freezing mark. But again, the atmosphere could cool down enough to where we see that snow mix in. The best chance of snow will be overnight Saturday and a Sunday, and then again Sunday evening. Our ridge will build back over us, so we'll have a nice middle of the week. But of course, I decided to go ahead and put a few weather tips for your weekend. It's going to be wet. Again, we're going to see that chance of rain with snow for the weekend. So this is a great opportunity to get caught up on that schoolwork or any TV shows, maybe host a game night, stay indoors and Rams. It's going to be perfect napping weather, but don't take a nap just yet. We've got sports coming up right after this.
me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. I'm sports anchor Molly Baltzer. Along my side, sports anchor Carly Schwartzkopf. Molly, do you know what day it is? Mama Day. Kobe. Kobe. We have the latest news in Ram sports. The Colorado State men's lacrosse team defeated number five BYU Cougars this past Saturday. The two rivals faced off at Hughes Stadium, which is the only game the team will play at the stadium this season. The Rams came out on top with a 10-6 win over the Cougars. While it was senior night at Hughes, it was freshman Jake Johnson who stole the show with a hat trick to lead the Rams to the W. Senior defender Alec Geyser also had a goal, and here's what he had to say about the big win. It's always fun playing these guys. Uh, it's a, usually a tighter game, but um, it's always a tough game playing these guys. We play them hard, and they play us hard, and it's a good little rivalry we got going, so it's always good to come away with a win on that. Tonight, the Rams defeated the ASU Sun Devils 7-6, marking their eighth consecutive win on the season. The team is set to play the Colorado Buffaloes this Saturday in Boulder at 2 p.m. The Mountain West Conference announced the Outdoor Track and Field Athletes of the Week, and no surprise, two CSU athletes made the cut. Transfer sophomore Mustafa Hassan is a Men's Mountain West Field Athlete of the Week. Mustafa has been on fire since he came to Colorado State. With stealing an All-American title in indoor, Mustafa finished second overall and first among collegians in the premier section of the shot put at the Sun Angels Classic on April 9th. Hassan broke his own record, CSU outdoor record with a throw of 64 feet 7.25 inches. Hassan overthrows all his competitors by 3 feet and is currently first in the Mountain West and third overall in the NCAA. The other Rammy to make the Mountain West Field Athlete of the Week is junior Aaliyah Pete. On April 8th at the Mesa Classic, Pete placed second overall and first among the collegiate field. Pete recorded a season best toss of 52 feet, 9.25 inches, and much like her fellow teammate Mustafa Hassan, Pete also overthrows her competitors by three feet as well. Pete is also ranked first in the Mountain West and 28th in the nation. And speaking of being stud athletes, the Colorado State women's soccer and men's cross country team exemplify what it truly means to be a student athlete. The two CSU teams were recognized this Wednesday by the NCAA, NCAA NCAA when it released its list of teams for academic progress rating, which highlight programs that have posted multi-year APR scores in the top 10% in their respected sports. This is the third consecutive APR honor for the men's cross country team and the first time in program history for the women's soccer team. Fellow Rams, if you've been wondering what the finished Sunny Lubick Stadium will look like, you're in luck. Colorado State Athletics released this Wednesday a flyover virtual video of what the new stadium will look like. The video highlights a first-hand look at the premier seating spaces as well as a new Ram locker room, Hall of Champions, and a new alumni and academic center. The stadium will host its first Ram football game in less than 17 months. And with a capacity of 41,000 fans, it's safe to say the new stadium will be huge. Ram fans can even purchase a commemorative brick that will form the letters Rams outside the North Plaza Gate, honoring CSU's history and fellow Ram fans. More information about the new stadium can be found at www.stadium.coloradostate.edu. So typically after a big sporting event, sport anchors like me and you will do a recap of the big game. Um, my brother Sam Balter gave it a go and let's see how he did. Hello, I am Sam Balter. <laughs> Sammy B reporting for Freelance Sports News. Uh, tonight was a huge game for the CSU Rams, topping the BYU Cougars. <laughs> Sam Balter reporting for Freelance News. Huge win tonight for the CSU lacrosse team. I'm Sammy B here reporting on Freelance <laughs> News. <laughs> Scored a goal on senior yet. Uh, Bruce here, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is tough. Carly, how do you think he did? I think he crushed it. I may have to have a new sports anchor. Just Coach, oh, you're the best. Thanks. <laughs> After the break, Horse Tooth Hot Sauce will be joining entertainment Emma, Emma Iannacone. <laughs>
Don't worry. The 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Join Rocky Mountain Student Media on April 22nd for the first ever Ram Slam Volleyball Tournament sponsored by Chippers Lanes and BioLife Plasma. Come play in the A or B division or watch as participants of all skill levels compete to win. Enjoy local food trucks and music from KCSU. The tournament is from 3 to 8 p.m. on the IM fields and sand volleyball courts. To register your team of 2 to 4, go to eventbrite.com and search for Ram Slam. The cost per team is $30. We're back from the break with your entertainment news. I'm Emma Anna Cohn, and it's gonna, tonight is going to be spicy, but first, let's talk Star Wars. It's been announced that the original Star Wars trilogy will be returning to theaters this August. Tickets will be on sale on May 4th, also known as Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Get it? Okay, anyways, some of the screenings will be a day-long marathon of the original trilogy, so be prepared to spend an entire day in a galaxy far, far away. Not every theater is lucky enough to be showing the movies, though. Our closest screening will be in Denver, but the date and location have not yet been announced. If you want to purchase your tickets and keep up to date on locations, visit returnofthetrilogy.com and please dress up as your favorite character because this might be the only opportunity you get to see the movies that started it all on the big screen. If you're looking to see a movie this weekend instead of in August, the first annual Human Rights Film Festival will take place in the Lorry Student Center Theater. If 15 international films that cover heavy topics of human rights will be screened. Tickets for, for students are $5 and showings will begin on Friday at 7.30. Visit actfilmfest.org for more information. Now, Rams, if you love hot sauce, you need to know about Horse Tooth Hot Sauce. It's locally owned that sells hot sauce nationwide in 29 states. I have one of the owners here with me today, John Camo. Welcome to the show, John. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, scoot in a little <laughs> bit. There we go. So, can you tell me a little bit about your store and how it began? Well, uh, we started in 2008. I, I uh, grew up on hot sauce. My mom kept a lot in the house, in the fridge. Uh, both my sister and I uh, ate it all the time, and um, in 2008, I decided I didn't want to work for other people, so I um, started Horse Tooth Hot Sauce, and my sister worked for free mm -hmm. for me, and then she became partner, and we've been doing it ever since. That's awesome. So you and your sister work together. Can you tell me if there's any sibling rivalry, like who can make the best selling hot sauce? You know, the, the, well, the, the <laughs> nice thing about working with your sister or any family member is it, when you get in a huge fight, you have to make up because you're family. So yeah, it's not just about business yeah, anymore. Right, so it's, it's hard to leave that business partner or yeah. hold any ill will for that long. That's true. So I get it's, that. Been, it's actually worked out really well. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so can you tell me wh which one is your best selling hot sauce? Do you have it here with you? Our best selling hot sauce um, is the green. It's a uh, green habanero, tomatillo, and serrano, um, followed closely by the O face, which is my personal favorite. That is an orange habanero, cantaloupe, and carrot. Um, the green is great on like the t a lot of Mexican food, tacos, mm -hmm. enchiladas, burritos. O-Face, uh, very versatile. I use it on like pizza, pastas, um, also tacos. And another popular one that you can try since you said your palate doesn't take too much spice is our Smokestack Lightning. <laughs> it's got a smoky flavor, but it's made from Chipotle's, which is a smoked jalapeno. So it is our mildest hot sauce awesome. that we have. We do do um, some drink mixes as well. And uh, we do a spicy uh, margarita and a spicy Bloody Mary. That's awesome. So you just, you told me earlier that you just barely came out with the margarita mix. How the margarita mix is the newest line addition uh, for our company. And that's been out for three months now. Okay. But you can't get it at a ton of places because our distributor just picked it up. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. But you will hopefully soon be able to get it at all the local liquor stores throughout Colorado. Okay. All right. Well, let's try this. We have some Fritos here. Scoops. I'm very excited. Scoops, scoops, some scoops. scoops. So I'll let you go ahead and just grab that. I'll flip the top. All right, thank you very much. Now, remember, Rams, I have very low tolerance for heat, so, but I have a feeling these are gonna taste really good. 
Yeah. So that one's great. I add it to like mac and cheese, give it a little bit of smoky flavor. It's good in most soups, stews. Uh, if anytime you want to add a smoky flavor uh, to any of your cooking, just add a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, All right, here we go. We made the reducer small, so that way, if you don't want too much. Mm -hmm. And then I think you should go mm. to the other end that's of the really spectrum good. too. Right? Not too bad. Mm -mm. No, that's not even too spicy. I can handle it, guys. So. So this is we our hottest <laughs> um, sauce that we sell in stores. It's oh boy. the O Face Orange <laughs> Habanero Cantaloupe and Carrot. Okay, I'll get a little bit then. Don't want to yeah. cry we on don't, camera. <laughs> we didn't when we started. We didn't want to make anything ridicul ridiculously mm -hmm. hot. We wanted people to be able to enjoy it with their food and use a lot of it. Is that like mango? No, no. We do do a mango one, but I didn't bring that. That's orange habanero, and then mm -hmm. kind of the fruits in there are the cantaloupe and carrot. It has a little bit of a gar little bit of garlic and a little bit of onion. Yeah. At first, it tastes kind of sweet, and then it went whew, yeah. hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cantaloupe gives it a little bit of sweetness, and then the yeah, the orange habanero definitely kicks. So a little bit hotter than the chipotle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. This, this you said this one was your favorite. The That's my favorite. Yeah. Green is our best seller. I don't use it a ton, but um, I think being mm -hmm. in Colorado, people like the tomatillo flavor. They like that green chili flavor. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So definitely good in its own, uh, you know, in certain dishes. Right. So you actually graduated from CSU. Yes, yeah, horticulture degree. <laughs> Very helpful. Back in, <laughs> back in the day, I won't tell you when, but it was a while ago. <laughs> Campus didn't quite look like it does now. That's very good. All Thank these you. are delicious. Yeah. And um, I did bring you some barbecue sauces and stuff for later. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh. <laughs> there you go. As long as you don't get the hiccups, you'll be okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay, so can you tell me how it's made? Like, what's your prime uh, pepper that you guys use? Um, most of them will have habaneros. Um, we have three sauces with habaneros. The the green that you tried, the O-Face, mm -hmm. um, and then Ruben's Triple X, which is a spicy version of a Ruben's Red, which is our cayenne pepper sauce. So, um, yeah, we have six total sauces used in four different peppers, but we do mm -hmm. like to experiment. We do a bunch of small batches, kind of like the breweries around here, right. where um, you know we do ghost chili, which is even hotter. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a reaper pepper mm -hmm. with cranberries for the holidays. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be for leftover sandwiches and stuff. And those always do really well. They go really quick. Yeah. But those, you have to check the website to see when they're available. OK. All right, so uh, can you tell me where these are sold so that people can come and Yeah, um, the, them? Ma the majority of our product line is sold um, in Colorado at Whole Foods Markets, um, Sprouts, Farmers Markets and the Vitamin Cottage. Um, locally, you can get them at a bum bunch of different play places. Uh, Beavers Market, the Cupboard, Jack's Outdoor Gear, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of the places that you can get them on the tables, like the Back Porch Cafe, they'll also sell, sell them to you there. Okay, well, awesome. Thank you so much for being here, John. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you for having me, Emma. Absolutely. Um, so make sure you guys go and try these because they're really good, honestly. I'm just very low tolerance for heat, but I'm okay, so <laughs> don't worry about me. All right, have a good night, Rams.